Mortal, I have something to show you. The bags of groceries fell from my hands to the kitchen floor. In the back of my mind, I hoped the eggs didn't crack. Then my brain caught up with what was happening, and I exclaimed, Oh no, not again. The kitchen swirled before me into the now familiar kaleidoscopic vortex of colors. The white of the floor tiles, the cream of the refrigerator, the glowing green digits on the microwave, and the gray of the faucet and sink all blended together. The colors changed. Dark grays, blacks, and navy blues clouded the periphery, while bright orange and white shone in the center. The spinning vortex began to slow down, until finally it stopped moving, and I could make sense of what I was seeing. I was looking at a building on fire. Flames wreathed its entire silhouette in a burning corona, illuminating much of the ground around it. It was set on a small hill above me. Peering more closely, I saw that the shape of the building was that of a small church. It had a highly sloped roof and a steeple that rose above the flames. The cross on top was illuminated from below. Smoke rose above that, and where it was not too thick, reflected some of the orange light from the fire. I was perhaps sixty yards away from the burning church, standing on level ground. Around me stood many headstones, some shaped like the cross on the church's steeple, others a little more than stone slabs stuck into the ground. A small stone fence surrounded the graveyard. The sky above was dark, moonless with occasional glimpses of bright stars. What do you think of my work? Asked a voice to my left. My skin crawled at the question. Slowly, I turned to see the speaker. It was a tall man, standing with his arms crossed and facing me. He was dressed all in black, combat boots denim, leather jacket, and a t-shirt. His skin was bone white, except around the mouth and eyes, where it was as black as his clothing. Straight black hair fell across his shoulders. On the black t-shirt was a design in faint gray, hard to see against the black. The design was a pair of glaring, pupilless eyes. Spiked bands adorned his wrists, and a silver chain hung around his neck. His eyes glittered within the black patches of skin on his face. Who are you? I bring woe, mortal. He smiled briefly as he answered. Answer my question. What do you think? He nodded at the burning church. You set the fire? No, I was asking your opinion of the architecture. Yes, I set the fire, mortal. Why? Why would you do that? Did you not hear who I am? You said you bring woe. That doesn't tell me who you are. The glittering eyes rolled within their ashen recesses. Would you prefer I told you my name is Jeff, or Kyle, or Dimitri? Or maybe I surprise you and say that my name is Helen. Any of these would give you a series of syllables to use in conversing with me. 
simply would reveal nothing about who or what I am. I was starting to get a little impatient. And that would be? I bring misery, mortal. I thought you said you brought woe. Am I mixing things up? The one is oft accompanied by the other. You have not answered the question, mortal. The way these otherworldly creeps kept referring to me as mortal was getting under my skin. However, otherworldly creeps are otherworldly. Crossing them did not promise to be a prudent course of action, not remotely. But all the same, he was not giving me a great deal to work with. What do you want me to say? That I think it's great? That I'm horrified? You're committing arson, not painting the Sistine Chapel. There are only so many ways I can react to this. He shook his head. I am not asking for your opinion of this tableau. Look at it more closely. Look at the church as it was. What did it do? Whom did it serve? It's a church. People went to worship there. A shallow analysis. Can you see nothing else? I looked again at the blazing building. Details other than the general shape were impossible to make out. The church was named St. Peter's. It was founded in the year 1722 and remained a fixture of this village to the present day. During those years, it served as a focal point for this village's community. Weddings were held there. Memorial services were held there. Pastors christened children there. The sacraments of the church were dispersed to believers. It acted as a public forum when needed, a place of assembly for the residents. Its members gave donations to charity and held regular events such as soup kitchen nights and fundraisers for noble causes. It stood a sanctuary, a place of solace, and a fixture of the village. Even to those who did not attend, it was part of the landscape and the ringing of its bell became a familiar backdrop to daily life. It was all this, and more. But I suppose a place where people worship isn't completely inaccurate. I thought about that. His condescension was aggravating, and a modicum intimidating. But the words made sense. Okay, it is more than a building. What is your point? <laughs> it was more than a building. What is it now? A pile of... I trailed off. My initial thought, a pile of ashes, fizzled away as I considered what he described it being in the past. Good. Now you are getting the idea. He bared his teeth in a grotesque smile. The light from the burning building cast his white skin with a slight orange tone. He looked skeletal and ghostly. Keep going. I replied, the place of worship is gone. Its members now have to look somewhere else for a place to gather together for what they believe. 
The building's destruction will make them feel threatened. They'll be afraid. Anyone who is married there will suffer a little bit of pain. Anyone whose loved ones are buried in this graveyard will feel attacked, too. It can't be used for those soup kitchens or fundraisers anymore, so the people who benefited from those will also feel afraid, and if nothing replaces them, will suffer for it. And what of those in the village who did not associate with the church? They'll know that part of their village died. Some of them might be happy about it if they didn't like the church or what it stood for, but others will still regret it. The bells won't ring. Looking at this hill, they won't see a tall steeple. They'll see an ashen ruin at first, then nothing at all once it's cleaned up, if it's cleaned up. Verily. Why, why would you do this? I bring misery, mortal. There is naught else for me. Then why show me? I did not ask for your attention, mortal. Your guide brought you here. I gave you an audience as a courtesy to that one. I am now done with you. My plans will not complete themselves, after all. The man in black gave me a mocking wave, then turned to walk away. He melted into the night, and I could see him no more. I felt a new presence nearby. Previous experience suggested that trying to look at this other being would be pointless and leave me with a sore neck. I chose to look at the fire instead. I got a strange, indescribable feeling that my choice was met with approval somehow. I met your friend, whoever you are. The bringer of the woe is not my friend. Then why did you bring me here to meet him? To introduce you. That doesn't make sense. You brought me to a cold graveyard, beneath a hill with a burning church, to meet a guy with extreme musical tastes, just so I could meet him? No, mortal. Consider the question you asked of the bringer of woe. Who are you? And consider the given replies. Whom did you meet? He never gave me a name. You were given something much clearer than a name. I... He didn't tell me a name. He told me, showed me, what he was. What the world looks like because of him. All the sorrow, misery, and sadness that he causes. That is who he is. Few of your kind ever know such things, mortal. Know that you have been given knowledge hidden for many, and hidden for a reason. So, who or what is he actually? Is he some kind of spirit? A demon, or, or an anti-being like the ones from the Edge? The one to whom you spoke is one of a number of antagonists of your species. The form taken to demonstrate to you, and the venue of the conflagration, are ephemeral. That one has as many guises and roles as humanity creates monsters. But though an agent of despair, the bringer of woe is of this universe, and not of the harrowing void. It is all the more wretched that these 
are that one's ways. For that which is without is the antithesis of reality, and to oppose reality is all that could be expected without. But this one opposes the universe from within, a betrayal of reality itself. I will not give you a name. Do not ask for one. You brought me here to show me this. I now have met this guy who claims responsibility for bringing basically all misery into the world. Why? To ask you a question that you must answer for yourself. Is it something like, now that I've seen the face of evil, what am I going to do about it? No, mortal. The question is, who are you? Light swirled around me before I could reply. Once again, I stood in my kitchen. The entity was gone. I was shaking, either from fear or from excitement. I wasn't sure. As I considered the final question, a hollow feeling came over me. Who was I? I didn't know. Thank you.